Hello. 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 Let's get to see those who get to connect and then we can start. Knock, knock. I'm around waiting. <laughs> okay. I can see some people are coming on already. So just get to say hi or make us know you're there, you're connected. So we can get to give you a shout out. Oh. <laughs> She's connected. Thank you. And Monsieur Claude Dozier says he's connected. Um, who else is coming on live today? I'll be glad to have you all. Just get to share so that many more people can come and then we'll start. And we're hoping that um, we're not going to be here for a very long time. <laughs> Hello everyone. Who else is here? Let's see this coming. So, um, I'm sure everyone who is connecting right now got to find um, the post and then the topic. And the topic is supposed to be do not assume. So, I don't know. For those who are already here, maybe you can tell me what you think about it before we get to the angle where... I'm telling you what I wanted to talk about. I guess it's going to be a beautiful time together. And if you can hear me clearly, just let me know. If you can't hear me, just write on the comment section and say, um, Princess, maybe tone it up a, bit, a little bit. Or yes, we can hear you. So we're waiting and hoping that many more people will come through. Okay. Some people are coming up slowly but surely. Just let us know you're there so we can give you a shout out. <laughs> okay. So like I said, um, the share. Okay. He says he's also connected and I'm glad to have you. Um, keep it up. Keep them coming. Just share so people can come on. And then, um, like I said, so right now I want us to be talking to each other i want us to learn amongst ourselves so um what what exactly do you think about that topic what do you think what do you think about the topic assumption do not assume you know uh, a lot of times okay the share says he can hear me clearly thank you i'm glad to have you all here and uh we're hoping probably if three or four more people get to add, then we're just going to get on with it so we don't get it all long and then <laughs> we're really doing nothing yet. So while the people get to add, while we get to come on, we're just going to be talking. So what do you think? What do you think about don't assume? Do you think you might possibly guess the angle I'm going to come from? Well, there are many, there are many angles, so... We're here to learn together. It's our family, our tribe. And we love to learn, unlearn, and relearn. So there are probably some things we've learned, we've known them. And as at the time we knew them, we thought it was okay. And we grew up and learned better and had better knowledge in those things. And then we realized that they were not good. So we needed to unlearn them. And it's not very easy <laughs> because sometimes we get to be those persons that would say, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, <laughs> you know, but that thing is wrong. So that you've been consistent in it for like forever doesn't make it right. So you can be wrong and sincerely wrong because you are faithful to that thing that you've been doing. So 
that you've known that for long, that you've been in it for long, that you've used it for long, doesn't actually make it the right thing. If you get to get additional information to know that that thing is not good for you or that thing is not right. So we're all here. We're waiting for a few more people to come on. Who else is there? Just let us know you're there so we can get to give you a shout out and then we continue with our subject for today. So this is actually in continuation with uh, what we're talking about before. So the first day or the first episode we spoke about do not give a blank check. And we had a lot of people who gave us their options. They gave us other ideas, other tips we can use when it comes to giving a blank check. We had people who told us things like, if you want to give a blank check, give a statement at the end that would help you out because some people could become inconsiderate. And when they're inconsiderate, you get into trouble. So say to the best of my ability, something like that. And then some people said, we should also be reasonable enough because someone is saying, is giving you a blank check, like I'll do anything for you just to show that they love you some more. And then we have people who, to, who told us um, things like, you need to act the I'll do anything for you rather than say it so you don't get into trouble. Okay, so we got to that topic and we said, don't give a blank check. So we're waiting for many more people to come on. Who is there? Who is there? Knock, knock. And then we're just going to get on with our topic for today. Do not assume. So maybe someone can tell me a scenario, something that happened to you that you assumed and how it turned out, if it was good, if it was bad, you know. But I guess the angle I'm going to be coming from here is one that is not very good because we're doing our best to learn ways how not to get into depression so that's why we're coming up with all this um little tidbits to get to help each one of us to get through so who is coming up again uh okay yeah <laughs> i can see some people liking and loving but i can't see them on i don't know what's happening I hope it's not me. And I hope I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> okay, so what's happening? Yeah, some people saw my dreadlocks on my, on my, they saw my picture, my profile picture and my dreadlocks was off and they were shocked. They were wondering what was happening. So this is me live. <laughs> Don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. I'm a naturalista, so my dress is still on. It's just some creative ways that we get to do. Like ladies, we ladies, we get these things we get to do. And then you can do a lot of stuff and look different sometimes. You know, it's very important. So don't get worked up. And I'll tell some people how I do my dreadlocks sometimes on my YouTube channel because, um, on my YouTube channel, we're actually on with a series on tips on how to get out of depression. And then sometime soon, I'll tell you people how I do my dreadlocks because a lot of people tell me, oh, you're freaking rich. You know, keeping dreadlocks is so expensive. Well, that's so not true. According to me, it's so not true. But of course, I'm freaky, freaky rich. <laughs> okay. Of course, I'm a king's kid, you know, so of course, I'm freaky rich. So let's get on. Let's get, let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Uh, so who's there? Who's there? If you're there, just let me know you're there and we can go on. If you're there, just say, give us a hi or give us, or put us, put us your, put up your, um, favorite emoji and then we can get on i can see madame ryal randy there i can see sir claude i can see sir dj i hope it's a sir 
okay because i'm looking at the picture sometimes we have our friends and loved ones we have their pictures on our profile so we could get mistaken sometimes i hope i'm not okay so um today we're getting on we're getting on and at some point i would get to be celebrating some people really special people who get to support me all the time who get to um they think they think they are my fan but i'm their biggest fan like people who get to support all that i do madame rail is one of them like most of the time she gets to share my stuff she gets to post allow the post on her group and stuff like that sir claude also gets to share follows me on my social media handles i don't know the name dj share but it's possible that you've also supported me in one way or the other so i'll get to be celebrating these people because i always say most of the times to all my friends that i'll be the worst eulogist ever that's because i don't see any reason why i should be writing good things about someone who is gone already how how is that how is that a plus i prefer to praise people and and sing their praises for the wonderful things they've done for me while they're alive because like i always say one mentor of mine said any good deed you do that is rewarded gets repeated so when you actually acknowledge people for the amazing things they get to do they get to repeat it over and over and over again they get to do it and like they get to outdo themselves in doing that thing because they know this is what they're good at and if someone appreciates it then they should do it some more it's just like you all appreciated me for the first time i came on facebook live which i've been getting scared of and i'm here today a little bit more relaxed than the first videos sure so um we're getting on right now with our topic and it's do not assume do not assume okay so it's in connection with the first topic that's why we're having this today because um I'll start by saying the only one reason why you're going to give someone a blank check especially when you don't know them you 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 can't be so sure you can't vouch about them the only reason why you're going to give them a blank check it's because you're assuming particular things about them so let's um come with my case again So last time we gave the case of giving the blank check and then going the sex way. And I still said and I'm still going to say again today for whatever thing thing you hold dear, for whatever thing you believe in, I believe in the Bible and the word of God and the word of God gives me standards that I shouldn't have sex until I'm married. So I'm assuming that because this person says they are Christian as well, we have the same standards we believe in the same things so whatever your standards are whatever you believe in you get to assume if this person tells you that oh yes they're like you so you believe that they believe in the things you believe in but you can't be so sure like we said in the last video because from what happened in my own case the person probably didn't know about that particular thing in the standards of the bible It's possible. It's possible. There's a possibility that he didn't know nothing about it. Oh. <laughs> Madam Berry says she's also connected and she's happy to have us to be here live on the program. Glad to have you too. So you just don't know. They can be saying they're the same as you, but there are some things they don't know that you do. You know our generation, most of us we really 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 do not like to read we really do not like to read and so imagine that someone has not read the bible as much as you have and what is going to happen you know so there's some things that you would hold dear to yourself to your heart that that person doesn't there are things that the person might have been doing over and over and over and no one tells them this thing is wrong so when they get to you right they're going to do that thing it's not like they're doing it with that knowledge let's just say for instance i can be this kind of maybe in my house 
it's okay for maybe guys to relax while the ladies are cooking, you know, and in your house, it's not okay. So I come there and I'm assuming that, well, this is what I've been used to. This is what I'm, has been allowed in my house. It doesn't seem to be a problem to me. So I come to your house and I assume that it's the same because that's how I've been living my life. But it's wrong because maybe in your house, that's not how it's happening. That's not what gets to be the norm. So for just that one sole reason that you can't know someone perfectly, you don't get to assume. And if you're not assuming, what should you do? Ask questions. So like I said, we only get to assume because we only get to give blank checks because we assume. Okay? So assumptions are very dangerous. Don't get to assume anything about any person. Even when they tell you those things, still ask questions to be clear. To be sure that this is exactly what the person is saying. Okay, we also have Mr. Williams. He says, <laughs> uh, this is my back canteen colleague. Okay, that's nice. Like, canteen at GBHS, canteen at Boyer. Which of the canteens? And then we also have um, Madame Berry saying, high gold in a book. Africans will hardly find it. So true. Trust me. So true. But anyways, I think things are changing lately. I also used to be the kind of person who doesn't like to read a lot, but I started reading some really amazing books. So they kind of triggered my desire, my cravings to read. I read, but I read slowly kind of, but if every book was on audio format, I'm sure I should have finished reading all books on planet earth. Yeah. I love audio books. <laughs> Because I love multitasking. So um, I don't know about you. Has anyone had a scenario before that they got to assume and it landed them in trouble? So I got to assume that this guy said, um, this guy said, I said to him, he, he told me he was a Christian. So I know we have standards. Our standards come from the Bible, right? So I believe, I just assumed in my mind that we believe in the same things. We have the same rules and regulations. We have the same standards. So whatever is going to be asking me will be the right thing. So I go like, I can do anything for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a crazy assumption. And it got me into trouble. Yeah, it landed me in depression because the things they were asking for, I was torn between giving, giving those things and holding my standards, Bible standards. Yes. I love to keep my words. So, um, who is there? Okay. Mr. Encho says he's connected to, well, come on board. If you're there, just let me know. This is about us. We're talking, we're learning together. We can learn unlearn, and relearn. It's also sometimes people get to assume things. So imagine assumptions as well in the level where, okay, Mr. Eric, Jim F4 says he's there. Thank you. Mr. Evans, that you can say he's there. Thank you. You're welcome. We're talking today about not assuming and we're laying emphasis that the reason why we give blank checks is because we assume a lot of things about people. And we're saying that if you don't have to assume, you have to ask questions. So ask straight questions and clear questions so that you get perfect answers. And you don't stick to the assumption level because that can get you into serious trouble. So um, I can also say it in this way. You know, there are times where we get to assume like, um, for instance, I'm talking to a friend and then she's saying something or he's saying something. And then I'm already trying to figure out what he should say based on what I think I know about him or her. And I'm already trying to conclude, like I want to give the concluding statement. And I assume that this is what the person is going to say. It's so embarrassing. Like I've been embarrassed several times because what I assumed and said wasn't what the person was even going to say. So you just let them land. So there's several ways. There's several things. There's several times we get to assume 
it, it might not just be in relationship. It might be at work. It might be at home with your brother and sister, with your parents. You know, it might be friends, just anybody. Don't assume. We need to learn not to assume. We need to learn to ask questions. If we want to be safe, if we want our relationships to be beautiful, we need to learn how to ask questions and not assume. So are you the person who always gets to assume things? Oh yeah, he didn't call me today because he was mad at me. And then you go checking all your past messages to see if you said something wrong that got him mad. That's an assumption. Just ask him straight up. Are you mad at me? Did I do something wrong? It's easier, right? But sometimes we just, we just want to conclude. Like, we think that's just the easiest way. So we just want to conclude and get done with it. It's really, really risky and really crazy. So, like I said, we're learning together. I want to hear your, your own views. I want to hear what happened to you. Did you ever get to assume something about someone? And then it turned out not to be true a lot of times. So there were times that I was kind of um, maybe favored. I kind of assumed something and it was real. But there were times that I woefully failed. I woefully failed. And it taught me how to get to ask questions. Rather than just think that, okay, because this person said this is who they are and this is what they are. They're truly like that. Some people might say it and they're not like that. Some people might say it, but... We're human beings. We, we grew up in different environments. We grew up in different societies. We grew up, we have different cultures and all that. So um, our cultural upbringing, our environment, they have a lot to do with us and the way we perceive things, the way we see things, the way we understand things. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Fort is also there and he says he's connected. He's also listening. Welcome on board. So all that has a lot to do with how we see things, how we perceive things, how we understand things based on where you grew up, what people have been saying. It has a lot to do with how you would see things. So you can't just go assuming. OK, what if you asked and wrong answer was given? <laughs> I know, right? OK, so you're going to work with the wrong answers. You're going to work with the wrong answers. But just like, um, what example can I really get to give to explain that? Or someone, someone out there can actually help. You can actually send me a request to add up so that you can talk. You can also get life on. It's not just me. It's not a monologue thing. We're, we're in this together. So if you ask a question and you're given a wrong answer, what happens? You definitely have to work with the wrong answer. Sincerely speaking, that's the only thing that is going to happen. But it's way better than assuming because at some point, when the person wants to say the next thing, it's going to contradict what they said before. And you can hold them accountable for that. So this is the information the person is giving you because it's just the same. Like I was, I was assuming that this guy has the same standards with me. Right. And he didn't. So he had already told me he was a Christian. That's actually not, um, a wrong thing. True. He was a Christian, but there are things that I held that the Bible says that he didn't hold. Yeah, but he's a Christian. So we learn every day and we get to know new things. So probably the person might be giving you that answer at that time. Sincerely in their hearts of hearts, that's the real answer they know. Okay. Oh, yeah. So um, Madame Berry says it's horrible to experience scenes whereby friends assume and without even getting clear facts. And before you know they start sending on her text messages. I know, right? I've been there too. When people had a wrong perception of something that someone said about me and they just started sending me text messages, it's really, really not funny. Yeah, so it's good to ask questions. But um, so does anybody have anything to say about what uh, Mr. Encho asked? Like I said, at that point, the person might truly think that 
that answer they've given you is the right answer until they get to learn better, you know, until they learn to get, they learn, they, like they gain better knowledge on the thing. They'll be able to tell you that, okay, yes, it's okay, you know. So just like I said, you'll be able to hold the person accountable eventually when they gave you that answer because you'll be working based on that answer. And if something happens that gets complicated along the line because of the answer they gave you, then you can hold them accountable. Okay. And then uh, Mr. Eric says, well, sometimes it may not be the right time to ask a straight question. Are we forced to assume at that stage of the relationship? You don't want, it's, it's preferable that you ask the question than to assume because, okay, for instance, let's just say I get to assume and I'm thinking there are lots of times I've had these issues with several people that think I'm dating them. Like we're in a relationship because they assumed. So at every point in time, I'm very old school. So if you've not spoken to me, if you've not asked me out officially and I've said yes officially, we're not dating. But then I can be a very nice person. So people take my niceness for, some people assume that because I'm being nice, we're dating, which is not true. So imagine that you're putting that on your mind and you've assumed and you're not asking me a straight question. You assume at that stage and you're building that feeling. You're building that emotion that you have for me because in your mind, you think we're dating. That's going to be detrimental to you at some point, right? It's going to be really detrimental when you get to find out that you are probably in a ghost relationship, like you are on your own. So it's kind of risky. It's preferable to be safe and ask the question. Even in thinking it's not the right time to ask the straight question, it's because you're assuming. What exactly is the right time? Yeah. So that's the question we should ask. Like, what exactly will be the right time? What, what exactly is the right time? Because you're still assuming that this is not the right time. So we're trying to say here that don't assume anything. Take it like you, you don't have a clue about this thing. So you want to know about this thing. So you have to ask questions. The one that is really peculiar to me that I'm really loving. And I want someone to also give their opinion about is the question Mr. Encho asked. What if you're given the wrong answer? So assuming is risky at all levels, at all levels. Like we said, it's not only about relationship between um, like dating. It's not only that. It could be for any relationship. It could be for work. It could be for work. It could be for this or that, anything. I think you've got to trust someone so well to believe in the answer they give you. If not, you'll be treated as a fool. Thank you very much, Mr. Claude. Thank you so, so very much. Yes. So you have to believe in that person. Like, the truth is, what happens to us most times is we're just scared. Life is a risk. Everything is a risk. Jesus coming to die on the cross was a risk. He knew there were people that would probably accept or not accept. He still came and died anyways. To get um, economists say high risks, high profits, right? So it's, it's just delving in there. Ask the questions. It's preferable to ask questions than to work based on assumptions because those assumptions might not be real, might not be true. But when you ask questions, it actually narrows down the risks. Sincere people, of course, will give you a sincere answer. Maybe if it's not a sincere person, then the person is not going to give you a sincere answer. Because yes, if, say for instance, I was giving my example as when I gave a blank check, I was giving a, okay, uh, Mr. Eric says, I always assume everything about my business opponent because I can't go asking them and exposing myself. Okay. Uh, maybe you can expand a little bit more. You can expand a little bit more. There are things that you would know that they're doing. So your opponents say, for instance, give an example of, um, you assuming about your opponent. 
So you, you, if you're assuming they're going to raise prices, it means you know the old price. So you have information. You have information on that thing you want to do. If you're assuming that um, they're going to change their packaging, you know the old packaging they have. So you have, you have a, an information to work on. So it's not really an assumption per se. You're working on something you know about this company. You're not just assuming. So maybe you can give us an example that where it's like an assumption and it works for you. But like I said, there are times that I assume things about people and it works for me. But what about those many, many people that I assume things about them and it wasn't right? So to save myself the, str the stress, I realize that the best option is to ask questions. Ask questions always. Okay, Steve Durf, he says, ask questions to the right persons. Assuming could be better than asking the wrong person. Some people, okay, let's see this one. What did he say? Some people give you answers with so much confidence, you may think that they even know what they're talking about. <laughs> so ask to the experts. Okay, true. It's good to ask to the expert, but we're talking here about us, us. Say, for instance, you're my friend, and there is something I want to do for you, or there's something I want to deal with you, you know? Is it not better or safer I ask you about that thing than assuming like I said, um, let me try to find an example of given. So I, I already gave an example based on what I said on the previous video. We're talking about giving a blank check. So I want to give a blank check maybe to my boyfriend. Or I want to give a blank check maybe to my kid sister. Or I want to give a blank check maybe to my friend. And I'm assuming that they know my financial status. They know my financial capabilities. And then funny enough. Funny enough, they ask me way beyond my capabilities. They're just being human. So I'm assuming that they know that this is the level to which I can do something. It's preferable. I just ask them, um, this is what I want to do for you. Do you like this? You know, this is what I want to do for you. Are you okay with this? Something like that. Or better still, just get to surprise them with something nice. Like I said the last time, someone says, get to act it than to say it. So you're assuming that this person knows that. I assumed that the guy I was with was a Christian. So, example, he can't ask me for sex when we're not married. And then he asks me for sex. So the right question was supposed to have been, what is your take on fornication? What is your take on sex? What is your take on kissing? What is your take on alcohol? What is your take on this? I was supposed to ask those questions. I was not supposed to assume. Oh yeah, okay, so now I get your point. So Sir Steve is saying that we should ask the particular persons. We should not just ask any other person or their friends. Yeah, what we're saying here is go ask the questions to the direct person that you're dealing with. So if I'm dealing with my mom here, I should ask her the question. I should not assume. If I'm dealing with my dad, if I'm dealing with my friend, if I'm dealing with a co-worker, I should ask them the question straight up. I shouldn't assume because assuming can lead me in trouble. Okay, so um, who else is there? Sir Ford says he's still trying to catch up. <laughs> So we're talking on the topic today, do not assume. And we said, if you're not assuming, then you need to ask questions. And I, I was waiting for someone to also say this part. You could ask the wrong questions, you know? And so if you go asking the wrong questions, you'll probably not get the answers that you're wanting, you know? So we need to really um, try to put a balance to it. Yes, you need to ask questions and try as much as you can to ask the right questions, especially to things that are pertinent to you. So I got to understand that based on my standards, based on my values, these are the things that are a no-go for me. So if I'm getting into a relationship, I should ask the person those things straightforward, what their take is on those things. I should not assume that they also know it, and so they're going to be working with me on the same platform. 
Yeah, I shouldn't assume that. <laughs> Thank you very much, says Forge. He says assumption should be taken off. In fact, it should be eliminated in every sphere of life. Yes, it should be eliminated for real. Because assumptions have done a lot of things. It has made us, it has made us, it has made me, me. I don't know about you. Maybe someone can tell me a story that it has affected them. Assumptions have made me lose friends, a lot of friends. Like really amazing people. Because I assumed that they did this because of this. Instead of just going ahead and asking them, why did you do this? You know, I wasn't happy about this thing. Why did you do this? And I just assumed they did it because probably they heard a story about me and they got angry and something like that. And then bam, unfriend. Facebook makes it easy. Bam, you block, you know, and stuff like that. And then the person is gone. So your friend doesn't talk to you for like forever. Instead of waiting and then asking them, what happened? What, what, what was the problem? You know, I wasn't happy that you left me without talking to me for this long, long time. And then you go like, oh, really? Who does he think he is? Who does she think she is? She'll just come and go, come and go, you know, that kind of thing. It gets very crazy. It's because you're assuming things. Get to ask them. Get to ask. Yes, we know we're not eliminating the fact that... Um, sorry, sorry about that. The unexamined life is not worth living. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Forge, for that one. Yes, that's really beautiful. The unexamined life is not worth living. So, yes, we need to ask questions. We, we don't want to get into trouble. We don't want to assume things. Like I said, there are lots of times that I assume what someone was going to say. And then I was wrong, totally and completely wrong. Like I was out of topic, you know, out of topic. So we don't want to get into that scenario. You know, you just think about it and then boom, you unblock them. You block them from your social media handles and your platforms and everything. And then at some point you get to figure out maybe the person was even sick. How embarrassed are you going to be? You have to send a friend request again, you know. <laughs> It's not funny. Trust me, it's not funny. You have to apologize for assuming and saying something that that was not what the person was supposed to say. Meanwhile, you should have just either waited for the person to tell you exactly what happened or you ask questions. If it was so, so serious to you, you ask questions, you know. So I don't know if anyone ever got into a scenario where they assumed something. And so, like I said, I've lost a lot of friends, you know. I've been embarrassed several times because I said something that that was not what the person was going to say because I assumed that I knew them very well. And I've also gotten to do things for people just assuming like, OK, I think this person might like this. And then I do it and I know from the person's countenance that they didn't like it or they didn't enjoy it. But I'm like, OK, you know, and then some people have to act in a way to just try to please you at that moment because you did something or so. So it's really, really important we get to ask questions. I you can to ask the right questions. <laughs> Madame Barry was laughing at that one. Yeah. Boom. Social media is so easy. You get to just unfriend the person like, who does she think she is? You know, uh, sometimes you go like. I've been commenting, there are lots of times that I have friends on Facebook, um, social media platforms, and I'm replying to comments, and then for some reason, maybe my network goes awry or funny, and then I miss a comment, and then I go commenting on the other one, and then a person will just come to me, like, princess, do we have a problem? Why did you skip my comment? Oh my God, you know, you know? If they didn't come to ask me, they'll assume and they'll get angry. They'll be like, I have a problem with princess or princess has a problem with me. Can't you see? She didn't even comment. She didn't even like my comment. She didn't um, reply to my own comment. But look at, she replied to everybody's comment. Oh my God. Like seriously? Yes. She probably is in oblivion. Like I said, sometimes my internet gets really wacko and then I've already opened my um, notifications and then... It's all um, wiped out, so I can't see your comment. And then I go, I've already commented on every other person's comment, and then I've not done so to yours. And then you just conclude, you assume. 
oh, princess is mad at me. She's angry with me. That's why, okay? You just see me, maybe um, you see me on the road and I have this kind of look. I'm always smiling and always laughing. And then you see me have this kind of look. Huh. Maybe it's that thing I did yesterday. Come on, just ask her. Princess, what is happening? Why are you not smiling? Why are you, you know? So, do not assume. Let's get that, please. Um, is there any other person there who wants to tell us something about assumption? So, I, I like, I missed out on um, Sir Steve Duff. He was saying that when you want to know things about people, don't go asking other people ask from the persons themselves okay um madame barry says my greatest assumption was thinking seeing an i7 on the pulpit had to behave the way we expect a person on that position should behave but they behave worse <laughs> than those open against christianity truly that that's the truth i i um, but for the fact that I'm not someone who generalizes, I would have really been very skeptical about people who say they're Christians. And I'm a Christian, so I can't go generalizing like that. I, I'm not saying I'm a perfect person, but I do make mistakes. But there are some things that people would do and then you wonder, like, for real? So I was contemplating, for example, I gave my example like sex. So I'm like, Bible says, you don't have sex until you're married, yes? And then, this is someone who says he's a Christian and he's supposed to be reading the Bible with me as well. And then he's telling me it's okay to have sex before marriage. It's crazy. So those who, those who say, do what I say but not what I do, it gets very crazy. <laughs> so Madame Berry says she assumed like that and she finally realized that some of them are worse than the people they say they are. And then uh, Sir Eric says, well, then let's narrow down the topic of assumption in close relationship because an economist, as an economist, I deal a lot and survive on assumption. The greatest theories, um, let's see that. Where did it go? The greatest theories have been built on assumption. However, on personal basis or say in cases where you know the person and it's really close, then you save yourself the trouble of assuming and getting it wrong. Let's say I just met a lady and just because I don't want to assume, I start asking direct questions like, are you a prostitute? Do you love sex? Come on, it really depends. Sometimes we need to build a relationship to a point of trust before we start asking direct questions. And during that time, we depend on assumptions until we get close to the person to be free to ask. Okay. Um, like I'm saying, Sir Eric, it still um, boils down to, I wanted you to give us an example. So like I've said, you have information. When you don't have any information at all, you can't even do those assumptions when you don't have any information at all. So um, we said here about asking the right questions. So you can meet someone today and ask them, what is your take on prostitution? You don't need to go ask her if she's a prostitute or something. No, 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 no. What is your take on prostitution? From then you can know what she believes, like what is a take. When I eventually got to ask questions, he gave me his take on fornication and it was still wrong. It wasn't biblical. So if I had asked that question originally from the start, I would have saved myself that stress of building that emotion that I had for him because I know we don't have the same standards from start. So if you just met this lady and you want to profess your love to her, like you want you people to start a relationship, get to ask those. Get to ask those questions. <laughs> Sir Claude says, Africans are experts in that domain of interpretation and assuming about others. That's very true. So that you see the girl wearing this short, um, funny clothes and all that doesn't necessarily make her a prostitute. Yes, the, the society makes us know that one who is almost half naked is a prostitute. But what if it's a prostitute that just changed from becoming a prostitute to becoming someone better but doesn't have clothes yet? What if? So the 
perfect question, like we said, you need to ask the right question. So that you have to ask question doesn't mean you should go asking any question. I can't go asking you how many girlfriends have you had? Like how many boyfriends have you had? Or how many have you ever had sex before? How many? No, 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 no. There are ways you get to ask those questions. So you need to ask the right questions. So say, Eric, coming back to you on this, you said, I like the part where you said, when the people are close, of course, we're talking about close people. We're talking about people that you have um, um, direct encounters with. Like I gave uh, examples. I said, we're not sticking it only to relationships of like, um, maybe fiance and fiance or boyfriend and girlfriend or no, no, no. We're taking it to the level of your parents. We're taking it to the level of your brothers and sisters because there are things we still assume even about those people which are wrong. So maybe because your, your kid sister said something and then you just assume that she's probably saying it to you because maybe a little bit, somehow you're guilty of it. And then you think she's directing that statement to you. You're assuming. Ask her, where did you hear that from? Why are you saying this? What triggered the topic? You know, ask questions. We need to ask questions and we need to ask the right questions. Just like you have said, do you love sex? Is that a question you're supposed to be asking in the first place? That's not a question you're supposed to be asking. So we need to ask questions and ask right questions. You can't go asking anybody, even if the person had been a prostitute before, and ask them, are you a prostitute? No. What is your take on prostitution? What is your take on sex? What do you think about sex? What, what, do you, um, what are your allowable limits? How far would you go when it comes to sex to someone you're not married to? Ask those kinds of questions. It's allowed. And it's reasonable. It makes sense. I can ask that even to my friends because I want to know their standards. So I want, I want to know their standards and I also want to tell them like, these are my standards. So I can ask. I can ask my mom. Mom, what, what do you think? What do you think are the allowable limits about sex? So you, there, there, there are questions that you can ask just about anybody. And so that's what we're trying to say here today. That most of the times, the reason why we even give people blank checks and fall into troubles is because we assume. And in assuming, we are most of the times wrong. Yes, in business, you get to assume, but you get to assume based on information that you get. So you're doing a hypothesis on information that you have. But this information about these particular individuals is not just there in your face. So you um, maybe you're an opponent in business. Your your competitor is you. You both are selling maybe books. You know these are the kinds of books the person is selling, and so um, these are the prices that the person has. So I'm assuming like um, if I drop my prices to like two dollars less, I'll make better profits. I'll still sell wholesale like quick turnover and I'm going to make gains other than trying to just compete with him or put my prices at some kind of thing. So the assumptions is based on information you have. So it's more or less not really assumptions per se. But when it comes to us relating with people, ask those questions. Don't assume. I've given those examples over and over and over like me, someone thinking we're dating because I'm being nice to them. No, 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 no. Ask me questions because I would ask you too. If I see some guy being so nice to me, I'll ask you, what is this? This thing we're doing, what is it called? We give it a name, okay? When it's not known, when, when something is not known, the purpose is not known, we get to abuse it. It's normal. Um, thank you, Madame Mabel Oben, my very young mommy. <laughs> she says she's there too. So um, those are indirect questions. If you wish to know if I'm a prostitute or not by asking questions like, what's your take on sex or prostitution? I may be in support of prostitution based on certain rationale, but it doesn't mean I'm a prostitute. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So as at that point, 
based on if you are in support of 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 prostitution then i don't have any reason being with you because my own understanding of prostitution is it's not good so i'm not going to i'm not going to encourage prostitution at any point in time so if i'm talking to you and your take on prostitution is it's okay then i don't have any business being with you that's the point i'm making so yes even the indirect questions you get to know the person's stance so you get to know the person's standards you get to know the person's values by asking those questions they seem indirect but they're giving you information which is the information you want to know about if the person is saying prostitution is okay then it means at some point they could also get end up being a prostitute if they think it's okay that's very plausible so from there you can know you have information you ask the question and you have information yeah so if the person is telling you it's okay to be a prostitute you can go ahead now and ask a, a much more strict question as in so are you saying that you can be a prostitute if you have an opportunity yes even to someone you just met today you can ask that kind of question you can ask that kind of question okay um bring it back to it so we can get to know what you're talking about are you a prostitute you can ask someone are you a prostitute you can ask someone what is your take on prostitution and if their take on prostitution is if their take on prostitution is this is your answer your your question here is what is your take on sex or prostitution is like um based on the support it's not rational because the person doesn't it doesn't mean i'm a prostitute so that's what i'm saying so like when how do you know that the person is a prostitute or not how do you know maybe you should give a mr eric you should give us a clear example i'm giving you clear examples here so give us a clear example what do you think is okay is what you can do too good thank you mr frank that's what mr frank is that's just what i'm trying to tell him here what you think is okay it means it's something you can do so i won't be assuming that you can become a prostitute if you say prostitution is okay yes so you ask those questions and you get to know the person's standards and the person's values through asking those questions but uh, on normal basis i cannot just get in front of you and i'm talking to you and i look at you maybe because of the dress you're wearing and i just assume that you can become a prostitute no but your answer you're going to give from the question i asked you will tell me will give me a a heads up so if i'd asked this guy originally what is your take on fornication and he tells me that fornication is okay because of one reason or the other of course i would know that there is the possibility that he will eventually ask me for sex because it's okay he will eventually ask me for sex because to him it's okay so i wouldn't dare give him a blank check why would i give you a blank check when there will be a possibility of me not being able to keep to my word you see so you need to ask those questions and like we said ask the right questions so the questions you ask there are not the questions you're supposed to be asking you should ask it the other way around maybe some other person can give another um way to ask the question so it's not exactly the way i'm asking but you can go asking someone are you a prostitute you can go asking someone are you are you um uh, uh what are you a thief you know what's your what's your take on theft based on what the person's take is it means it's what they can do it is So his take on fornication was it's okay. And that's why it was normal when he was asking for sex it had to be normal. Yes? So you see, if I'd asked from the original starting point, I wasn't going to get into trouble. So it helps you. It helps you reduce the people you should be connecting to and relating with. It's hard. but is the safest and the best way it is hard believe you me it is hard it is hard 
Okay, is there some other person who wants to tell us maybe you had an issue sometime? Maybe you assumed something, it got you into trouble. Maybe you assumed something, it worked for you. You want to tell us a story. Like I said, it's always our thing. We're doing it together. It's not a monologue. It's actually a family thing. It's like a group class. <laughs> and we're teaching, learning, unlearning, and relearning. So maybe you give us a straight example, Sir Eric. Um, maybe you give us a straight example on business so we can get to understand better. Because I like that part where you're talking about economists who assume. Maybe I'm, I'm not knowledgeable enough on that aspect. So you can give us an example that will bring us more light to it. That's why we're here. We want to learn. And we want to unlearn and relearn things that we probably did not get better knowledge on it. So it's going to help us better. Okay. And you can also get to come on. Like I could send, you could send me an, um, a request to come on, to be invited so that um, you can be on my, you can be live as well. So if you want to join, join me, you can just send a request and you'll be on live and you tell us, you talk to us. Maybe you want to talk. <laughs> And I said, this is me facing my fears. I was assuming that I would not be able to be on, <laughs> on Facebook Live. And I'm here today. So I actually stopped assuming after asking myself a lot of questions. What is it that you're scared of? Why don't you want to be on Facebook Live? What is stopping you? You do videos on YouTube. You do videos all over the place. So what is so scary? And after asking myself those questions, here am I. Like today, I feel more comfortable. <laughs> okay. So um, we are about wrapping up. If any other person has an addition to, to give us, we'll be very, very delighted. Thank you, Madam Rael. Thank you, Sir Claude. Thank you, DJ Cher. Thank you, Madam Berry, Mr. Williams. <laughs> he says, bravo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ancho. Thank you, Sir Evans. Thank you, Sir Forge. And who else do we have? Thank you, Sir Steve. And there. Uh, who else is there? We have uh, Sir Frank. Thank you, Madame Mabel Oban, my mommy. She's also there. Okay. Uh, the theory of demand and supply is also based on the assumption that more will be bought at a lower price than at a higher price. But that's not always true, but it still works for major majority of the cases. The point here is that the theory is based on assumption and many other theories. Okay, those are theories based on assumption of information. Uh, these people actually did a survey before coming out with those theories and all those things. So they had information. They probably got to lots of people and asked them, would you, um, <laughs> would you, would you, um, would you actually buy at this price? If this good is this price and this price, what would you buy? So they, from that statistics, they got to know that a lot more people will buy when prices are less than when prices are high. And they also have, there, there are various theories that give reasons why people will do the things they do based on statistics. So they got information. Asking questions is to get information to do what you have to do with it. So you need that information. And when you don't have that information and then you put your own information in your head to use it on that person or with that person, you get into trouble. But when prices are low, of course, a lot of people get to buy. Me as well. I love to buy when prices are lower than when they're higher. Even though there are people that, um, I learned something in economics, they call it goods of ostentation. Like this high and mighty people have some classic goods they want to buy. So based on the price, that's how they buy. You know? But based on statistics that these people have gotten, based on questionnaires that they've asked a group of people, a number of people, 
um, they get to bring out those um, theories and all that. Point is their assumptions, be it with information or not. So that's why we're saying we want us not to assume. Just go ahead and ask questions. Ask the questions. So when it comes to us relating with people, when it comes to us relating with people, is it brothers, sisters, friends, relative, loved ones, whoever it is, don't assume. Don't assume anything about them. Just ask them. To be on the safe side, just ask them. Like Mr. Encho said, that was the one that was intriguing to me. He said, what if they give you the wrong answer? You're going to deal with the wrong answer, but at least you ask the question. And so you will be able to hold them accountable in the end for the answer they gave you. And I said, like, sometimes the person might not even believe that answer is wrong because of their perception and how they grew up, where they were brought up. And how they're brought up and where they grew up shows that this thing is okay. This thing is okay. You get, oh, thank you so very much, Mr. Eric. You're also making it amazing. I'm liking it all the way that you're a part. I'm so excited. So um, who else is here? You want to give us, okay. Um, Mr. Frank Dile says, a successful women scared of marriage. <laughs> It's a very, very crazy assumption that people make. Um, and that's not how they actually put it. They didn't say successful women are scared of marriage. Most of the times they say successful women don't get married because they're proud. And I put it this way. Or a certain guy said in one of the one meeting that we had for singles and stuff, he said the truth about it is that some guys due to, due to complex will just feel uncomfortable going to talk to a successful woman. And I could still use me as an example. I've gotten to lo lose a lot of friends when they got to know my educational status. So it wasn't more or less like I'm a proud person or I'm not a nice person because they knew me and were relating well all through the time. Some of them for years, some of them for months, were relating very well. But I don't know what we were doing or what we were saying. And then maybe education came in and then someone just goes, what's your educational status? And then I go, they go, boom. And that was the end of us talking. Like, I write, they don't reply. I write, they don't reply. And then at some point, I was, I was like, I had to give up. Like, they're gone. So they probably, maybe, who knows? The issue that they say is, you just assume that because this girl is successful, she is proud. And so you're not just going to talk to her because you're probably thinking, if I go and talk to her, she's not going to look at me. She's going to size me up, you know, like it, it's not true. Go talk to her. Go talk to her and then let it be that you got that experience. It should not be that because you grew up hearing that successful women are very proud, snobbish and showy and all that. They can't respect a man. And then you just go with that assumption. It is a very, very not nice assumption. And it has made a lot of ladies. I've spoken to some ladies and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to do this. I don't want to study to this level. If I do that, I'm not going to marry. What? Like, seriously? <laughs> Successful women want men to meet up with their status. Assumption. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's possible. It's, it's possible. I don't know about that. But I think if you would ask, maybe you can do a sample survey and then get to find out. So now we've said asking questions is very good, right? So if you know a few successful women, you can get to ask them. Like, what do you think? Um, do you think um, it's okay? Do you think guys are scared of you? Do you think um, because of your status, you're not going to be able to marry someone who is not of your status? You can ask those questions. People do projects and researches on that. 
So you can get to ask those questions. So you get to experience in life and get to know what they will say, you know? <laughs> Maybe when you make the questionnaire, you should send one to me and then I'll answer and give it to you. <laughs> okay, so um, we can get on, we can sign out for today. I think we're done for today. If there, if there are more questions, you can send them to me and then we'll kind of find out time to get to respond to them, all of them. I'll do my best to respond to all your questions. If there are questions that you're going to leave for us here today. I'm so glad to have you all here. Sample survey. <laughs> no, like sample survey, you're going to ask them the questions live. You're going to ask these people questions. And then you're like, oh my God. I asked 10 ladies and this is what they think. This is what they believe. This is what they say. So you're going to ask me and this is what I'm saying. So you're going to know, oh, this successful woman says no. And you're going to ask this other one say this other successful woman said yes they want someone that is their standards and all that so you would have to ask them questions or if you meet a successful woman which you want to have a relationship with just ask her it's simple <laughs> the first part will be go talk to her don't go with the mentality that they're scared of men or they're not going to be respectful get to relate to them get to relate to the person yeah <laughs> Thank you, Sir Frank. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love the fact that you're here and you're making it lively. So we're going to be going off. And like I said, my journey out of depression, it continues on my YouTube channel. I'll actually post the link here. And then this one is tips how not to get into depression. So one of the tips you need to use so you don't get into depression is do not assume. The first one was don't make blank checks. We make blank checks because we assume. We give blank checks because we assume. And so we don't want to give any more blank checks. So we're not going to be assuming. We're going to be asking questions. Okay. So thank you all so very much for being here today. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for following on my channel. Like I said, some people were freaking out. They thought I cut my dreads. No, I haven't. So I'll probably do some things on my YouTube channel. So you get to know about my dreads a little bit. <laughs> Okay, thank you all very much. We have to go now. Um, get to share as well. People can get to watch later. And I'm sure it's also going to help them. And we can get many more comments. And people will also tell us what they think about assumptions. And if they believe it's okay or not. But to the best of my knowledge, I would say, if you don't want to get into trouble, which is not only trouble, like in relationships level, like, boyfriend, girlfriend, or fiance, fiance, just ask questions. Don't assume. Just ask questions. Simple, straight questions. And write questions. Write questions. So thank you for being here today. We have to go. I always get to say I love you so, so very much. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. But God loves you way, way more. Get to like our page too. And then also follow us on our social media handles, Instagram, we're there, YouTube, we're there, Facebook, we're there, LinkedIn. A lot of people don't go to LinkedIn, but I'll tell you the truth. LinkedIn is one amazing place you want to be there. You can connect, network, and you can also get jobs on there. Really good jobs, real jobs, no scams. So let's learn to connect to some of these social media um, platforms and make the best use of them. Let's not just use our time on the internet anyhow. Let's get to connect on our social media platforms and let them get to impact us in one way or the other. This is where I'm going to say bye-bye. I can just keep talking like you tomorrow. <laughs> I guess I'm getting used to right now. Thank you all for being here today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.